and welcome to Temple of Akasha, the home of embodied spirituality with me, Natasha. So today's video is going to be speaking about how the Kundalini awakening process serves us because it's all too easy when we're in the midst of this very intense alchemical process to feel like a victim of this experience, to feel helpless, powerless, as though it's a curse. I know firsthand how debilitating, confusing, scary, isolating the process can be. And I feel that I'm somewhat more qualified now, four years into this process, to speak about the profound positive impacts that this process has on our being. And I'm not speaking about this based on a textbook that I've read or, or the, the things that I've studied about this process. I'm speaking about it from my direct experience of how it's changed me, how it's positively changed my experience of reality, and what I feel are the real opportunities from the Kundalini awakening and, and how we can really um, cultivate cultivate the truest, most expansive version of ourselves through this process and what is required of us in order to do that. Um, I've had a lot of people recently booking in one-to-one -one sessions with me who are either going through the process right now in a very acute, painful, disorientating, debilita debilitating way, or they've recently been through it and they're, they're kind of in the midst of that flux and ebb and flow. And it's just very apparent to me that you know, that we are now, I believe, going to be moving through a time and a period of history where more and more and more people will be having this organic ascension technology, this innate technology within us activated. And I believe we're going to be seeing these, these awakenings happening much more prolifically across the, the global stage. And so I think it's time now for as many of us as possible to, to be speaking about the process and and really importantly like speaking about how this process is serving us so let's dive into that so I would invite you if you haven't already done so to watch my first video which speaks about my personal kundalini rising event which happened in October of 2019 and I'm going to post a link to that somewhere here so if you haven't seen um, my story, if you haven't listened to my story already, I recommend listening to that. It will provide some context of my experience. My experience was um, what I'd called a, a spontaneous kundalini awakening in that I wasn't consciously trying to prepare for a kundalini rising experience. Um, and so it felt very left field and, and acute and explosive for me. Although in hindsight, I was, you know, following the yogic path. I was... Um, practicing, um, you know, daily meditations. I was really focused on mindfulness, presence, uh, moving energy in my body. And so I was um, inviting, coaxing in some way, this energy to begin to, to awaken, stir and begin the rising process. So, um, you know, that, that's, a, that's a conversation for another video. But for me, the, the, the experience was very, very, very challenging, as I mentioned in that video. I will make a separate video all about the symptoms, quote unquote symptoms, because they're not symptoms. They're just presentations of, of the, the awakening um, that look strange to the conditioned mind. Um, so I'll make an entirely separate video about the symptoms. This video I really want to speak about how this process is serving you. So if you're in it right now, and you're finding it incredibly challenging, the first thing that I would like to say is that we, we are not the true expression of who we are. We are not these beaten down, domesticated, pacified, homogenized beings that the fear-based matrix has conditioned us to be, okay? We are not these you know, unifaceted um, kind of mundane beings, right? That are only, um, that are only meat suits walking around, right? And that we are here to serve a cog in this, in this matrix machine. There is so much more to who we truly are that has been very deliberately diminished by the powers that want to be 
in control and have had um, a lot of influence over humanity for the last three, few thousand years at least. And so there has been a diminishment and a degradation of our fullness, which the Kundalini awakening process is countering. It is the countering force to the degradation of humanity. It is the, a process that will restore us to the fullness of who we are. It is a process of us being rewilded back into our multifacetedness, back into our superhumanness, which is actually, I think, just, you know, it looks superhuman to us you know, with very limited states of consciousness, things like telepathy and our psychic abilities being, you know, online um, and awake. And all of the many ways that I believe that humanity has the potential to be very powerful, magical, you know, dynamic in, in its expression. Um, this process is waking us up from a very, very deep sleep. But to the conditioned mind, right, we've been conditioned to be these kind of robotic, homogenized, you know, as I've said, beaten down, pacified versions of, of our true wholeness. And so, you know, to those of us that are used to just walking around and stifling our anger and, you know, stifling our creativity and denying us our full sexual expression and not being fully embodied in our truth and our aliveness, this process, which is the feminine force of creation, it is Shakti Kundalini, the feminine force of creation has been eradicated in collective consciousness, right? It has been completely diminished and bulldozed in collective consciousness deliberately because it is such a dynamic, powerful, mystical force, unstoppable, unstoppable force. And when that feminine, that divine feminine energy marries with pure consciousness, we are restored to our God self. The powers that have been in charge up until this point have not wanted that to happen. So the feminine principle within all of us, regardless of our biological sex, that has been denied, diminished, deliberately made out to be something that may be demonic or evil, right? And, and then patriarchal programming and religious institutions have compounded this idea so that we actually fear the feminine principle within ourselves and then expressions of it in the world. So when we're going through a Kundalini awakening, we are being reintroduced to our feminine principle in its fullness. That's a very confronting process to go through in a world that has completely lost touch with the, with the true and deep essence of the feminine principle, which is creativity, which is dynamism, which is expression, which is emotionality in its fullness, which is our sexuality, our sensuality. You know, when you look out at this fear-based matrix, and I mean, this is really prolific in the West, you still see a retention and a... And a um, uh, a, a, a connection to the feminine principle in more indigenous cultures. But in the West, it's, we are living in wounded, masculine, patriarchal paradigms. You know, we are living in these, in these um, very, very distorted paradigms that favor productivity, doing, oppression, dominance, aggression, um, control, having power over, um, you know, tribal mentality um, and a very, very gross connection to reality. So very, very concerned with the physical, with the tangible, very severed from the subtle realms, very severed from the energetic, very severed from the aspect of our consciousness, that feminine principle that can commune with the divine. OK, and we see this in the West, at least. We're com it's a completely spiritually impoverished landscape, hence why the world is in the mess it's in. So when we're going through a Kundalini awakening, we are being reintroduced to the feminine principle, the goddess, right? We've been sold, Abrahamic religions have sold us one, one idea, ideal of God, as God as man, right? God as he, God as father. 
<laughs> which is so, to me, which is so bonkers, given that you cannot create life without the feminine principle. You cannot birth life without the feminine principle. Creation requires two forces, masculine and feminine. This is echoed throughout nature, right? We are expressions of these forces. And because of the power of the feminine force of creation, we have then been repackaged and sold a, a binary understanding of our true nature and the true nature of reality, which is to only focus on a male or a father God principle, which is there, and it is not the full picture. So when you are going through this process, you are being reawakened to your full expression. Why is that a good thing? <laughs> because you are, your unique authentic expression is the medicine that you've come here to share with the world. If you continue to live a contained, diminished, domesticated life in the box that the matrix has put you in, you cannot fulfill your soul mission and dharma here on earth. We've come into these bodies onto earth school to remember and reawaken to the fullness and to terraform this realm into an Eden. We can't do that if we're heavily conditioned and living from fear-based programming. This process is waking us up to all of the ways in which we've denied our true nature. And so there are, there are a lot of ways in which this presents that can feel really scary and confusing to our human, to our humanity and the ways that we've been conditioned to accept as, exp as normal expression, right? Whether you're going through spontaneous mudras, so gestures either with the hands, can be with the tongue, with the eyes, whether you're going through, you know, spontaneous yoga asana, of coming into certain postures spontaneously, whether you're having your body moved and snaked by the energy, because this is a very dynamic force. It wants to stimulate the flow of healthy energy throughout your system, through the nadis, the channels in the body, so that your primary channel, shashumna, the, the spine, the central channel from the root to the crown can be fully established, fully in integrity so that each primary center and all of the channels off of those centers can flow freely, so that your life force energy can flow freely, so that you can be a fully expressed, fully animated divine being in human form. And so because of this human experience and the ways in which we have been living from a fear-based frequency, we have accumulated vast amounts of trauma, energetic blockages in our system, we have become very used to uh, denying, avoiding and diminishing our emotional expression. We have got very used to self-censoring in various ways, whether it's the words we speak, the way that we express, um, you know, even the way in which we inhabit our bodies, the way in which we dress ourselves. We have been conditioned to really um, inhabit a very small a small state of consciousness, a very limited and confined state of consciousness. <laughs> Shakti Kundalini doesn't give a shit about your human conditioning, my human conditioning, doesn't give a shit about the bondage of this fear-based matrix. She has one purpose and mission, and that is to rewild you to, so that you are a conduit for the force of creation. And so, yeah, you know, if you're used to living like this, in a teeny tiny box that's a prison, and it feels like prison, even if we've become very used to and comfortable in that prison, this process can feel very, very confronting. But as I've experienced directly, the benefit of that is that the more this process begins to unravel you and, and alchemize all of the ways in which you've been limited and contracted and tense and rigid and domesticated and small, as it begins to rewild you and unravel you, you start to come alive, truly, truly alive, really rooted in the body again, really lucid and awake to your world. You become more illuminated, you become more awake, more enlightened. Okay, you are beginning a path of mastery within your own being, mastery of your own system, mastery of your energetic body, mastery of your reality, of your mindset. 
this process is seeking to purify you of limitation of fear-based conditioning so that you can be fully actualized in all of your divine potential. So this is such a gift. The only reason it gets challenging is because, as I've mentioned, the ways in which this energy seeks to rewild us seeks to open us because there have been so many blockages in our systems from the accumulation of so much trauma and through so much energetic stagnation the way in which it seeks to you know rewild us and unravel us can feel very jarring because if you if you imagine a, a river flowing okay when that river is flo flowing flowing freely you know, and there are no rocks, there are no um, obstacles in the way. It is a clean and clear, fluid process of the water flowing. If you put a load of boulders in that water, what's going to happen? The water's going to hit up against it. It's going to splash. It's going to have to take a detour. Okay, it could get a little wild and messy. You could use that same analogy for energetic blocks within your body, whether that's, you know, stored tension and trauma, unexpressed emotions, any ways in which you have accumulated physical um, dis-ease and disharmony through perhaps, you know, a more acidic um, uh, body pH, whether that is through, you know, just not having detoxed before. And so you've got the accumulation of toxicity in your system. When this energy is hitting up against blocks, that's when we have these explosive or these jarring experiences. When the energy is flowing freely and those blocks are no longer there, it is not a jarring experience. It is a fluid experience. And we become merged with this energy. It, be it becomes us. It becomes integrated. And so actually that has been for me, I would say the biggest takeaway and the biggest gift of this whole experience. And there have been many gifts that have been bestowed on me now and continue to be bestowed on me through this process. But I would say the biggest gift is the fortification of my field. And what I mean by that is the more I've alchemized, the more I've allowed the blocks to move, the energetic stagnancy to move, the more I've released the trauma from my system. And, and the Kundalini does this in a very somatic way by shaking the body through trembling, through twitching, through, you know, emotional expression. Okay, S somatic meaning body-based. So the Kundalini is very much about the body, moving this energy in the body. The more that that has happened for me, the more that this energy has settled in my system and become integrated. And what I mean by fortified is I have a sense that my field, my energy field is stronger, more robust. My sense of presence is more robust. My sense of being in my body is more robust. If you go back through some of my older videos, especially around the time when I'm sharing about the Kundalini awakening and you know, it happened from 2019 onwards. So a lot of those early videos, I was really in the thick of the Kundalini awakening process. I was a lot less in my body. I was more disembodied. I was going through a very intense kind of conflict of almost feeling like I shouldn't even be in a body. I felt very, very ungrounded. The energy really couldn't descend or occupy the lower centers of my body well. And so I was feeling very, very drunk, very heady. Um, again, I've got a whole video to make on the kind of symptoms and pre presentations of, of what was happening for me. Um, but this process, as it has moved the energy and alchemized my system and taken what was fear and alchemized it into love and presence... I feel so much stronger as a being. I feel so much more connected to my truth. I feel so much more connected to my earthly experience, my humanity, but from a place of conscious awareness, awareness that I am both the human and the divine and that I've come here to merge in that gnosis. Okay, so that I'm not here to be fully identified with my humanity and I'm not here to transcend my humanity and be, you know, to return, you know, just as a vegetable in human form back to these kind of more transcendental places. I am here in a human body, but lucid, conscious and awake and aware and uh, remembering that this is a playground, that I'm a creator, that I have the force of creation running through me, informing me. And the more I lean in, the more I listen to that force of creation, the more that I listen th to this dynamic flow of life, always present, the more miraculous my life becomes. 
And there are so many things that are happening now that are so, that feel so miraculous that I can't wait to share um, in videos soon. But for me, that has been the biggest gift as someone that went from being really, really highly sensitive, very ungrounded, very mm, destabilized by how sensitive I am to energy. So like many of you, I'm sure I have been you know, my entire life, very sensitive to energy. I'm a human design projector. So I have a lot of open energy centers. I sample a lot of energies around me. I feel the vibrational qualities of, of by, vibrational quality of this reality very tangibly. So I can feel different people's energy fields. I can feel different, you know, the energy fields of, of nature, of inorganic frequencies like EMF, you know, I can feel the nuances in vibration very viscerally in my experience. And without having any language or schooling in that, it was overwhelming to my system. What the Kundalini awakening process has allowed me to do is to take all of the energetic information that I've been receiving my whole life and begin to translate it, be, a be able to understand and decode in each moment as I deeply listen in presence what information I'm receiving and what to do with that information you know so I might someone might come into my field and you know I'm receiving information about them energetically and now instead of feeling overwhelmed by the fact that maybe that person's very angry at, at an unconscious level or anxious at an unconscious level I can just sense the anxiety or the anger in them. And I can choose consciously. In fact, I'm, I'm often guided by the energy to either offer support or move away or, or go somewhere different. So there is such intelligence to this process because it is expanding us into our multidimensionality, into our allness and allowing us then to communicate with the web of life which we're a part of because we are not these... The, the fear-based matrix has us living in isolation, right? That we are, this is who I am, this physical body. I'm, you know, I'm just, I'm just a body and then I die and that's it. You know, and it has us completely severed from the web of life, from this web of energy that we are all swimming in, that we are a part of, that we are integrated in, whether we're conscious of it or not. So as we rewild through the Kundalini awakening process, we become more aware of the web of life, of this singularity of which we are a part of, of this unified field of consciousness, which we are an intrinsic part of and an expression of. So for me, the benefits of this process are that you will become more lucid, more awake, more embodied, more... Um, more conscious of your soul's wisdom, gifts, um, the, uh, the superhuman qualities, you know, whether that's your psychic telepathic abilities coming online, whether that's your ability to manipulate matter, whether that's your ability to read energy at very nuanced levels and then begin to work with that energy. Um, there are, there are endless ways in which your gifts may materialize as a result of this process, but in order for you to access those gifts, you have to alchemize the limitations, okay? So you're taking the limitations, the obstacles, and you're alchemizing them into gold. You're alchemizing them into soul wisdom, soul um, gifts, soul gnosis, okay? So you are having to take the things that you thought you were, dissolve them so that you, who you really are can be revealed, okay? So that's not a comfortable process, generally speaking. And so I completely understand and, and sympathize with this sense that, you know, a Kundalini awakening process feels so challenging, especially in a world that is not educated at all on this process. It feels incredibly challenging. And if you can find the courage and can really rest in faith that you are being supported to become all that you've come here to be. And if you can lean in, lean into the present moment, really do as much as you can to disengage the mental chatter, really begin to focus on your mindset work, work focus on presence practices, becoming very mindful and aware, get out of this, you know, the mind is only going to get in the way of this process. Come into your body and allow yourself to start feeling your way through your life. Once you start doing that, your life is going to transform. 
because this intelligence is guiding you every step of the way, but it is not a logical linear thing. Okay. It's not, I'm going to do this thing and then I'll go to that where in the, that place and the mind will want to plan and map, you know, and understand cognitively. That's all redundant here. We are really like, I do not believe the human ever can truly have capacity to understand the fullness of our divinity and our connection to God. Okay. To, to this, to the source. So rather than cognitively trying to work your way through this process, please abandon, abandon a, a need to know here and let the body wisdom take over. You will then develop a gnosis that is far beyond mental knowing. You will develop a gnosis, a felt sense knowing. You will be guided moment to moment. But what is required of you is to lean in, to get present, attuned to the now moment, get in your body, okay? Do whatever practices allow you to embody, whether that's yoga asana, yin yoga is, is complementary, especially if you've got a lot of nervous system dysregulation, um, breathing practices, very soothing breathing practices to the, to the system like Nadi Sodhna, so alternate nostril breathing, but finding practices that allow you to get present, descend into the body and listen. What is needed of you now? I need to cry. I need to howl. I need to scream. I need to punch something. I need to express this truth that's bubbling up within me. Uh, I need to create. I need to paint. I need to, whatever it is, I need to move my body. I need to wiggle. I need to shake. I need to convulse. What Can you surrender to the intelligence of how it's moving you in this moment and know that you are being rewilded back into your fullness that this domesticated, pacified, kind of conservative version of your humanity is not the fullness of who you are. It's not demonic, right, to be fully connected to your expression. It's not demonic to speak your truth. It's not demonic. And I'm, as you can probably tell, I'm so fucking sick of the lies and the ignorance in the Christian community about what this process is, because it only creates and actually hinders this process, which is here to help humanity to awaken beyond ideology, which most Christians are operating from. They do not truly know God. They have an ideological understanding of the one through biblical texts. There is no text or Bible that can ever point you to God. God, you can only know God here. So I really invite you to shut out the noise of other people's understanding of this process, shut out your own mental judgments of this process and be fully present and attuned to what you're being guided through this intelligence to do, to be, to become. And I promise you this process will get so much easier, so much more easeful and it will fortify you. It will strengthen you. You will feel more robust, more present, more lucid, more awake, more dynamic, more energized, more connected to your truth, more sovereign, and it's all happening for you. So I hope this has been helpful. I'm very wary of not wanting to go on too, too much because I could speak for hours about this. I will create more videos about my symptoms or the presentations of the Kundalini for me. Um, but if you've got any other specific questions that you'd like me to answer about this process, please pop them in the comments below so that I can support those of you on this, on this journey. Um, and I look forward to sharing more of this content soon. It's been such an integral part of my process of moving to the stage that I'm at now in my, in my spiritual journey. Um, and just know that if this process is happening for you, it's because you are ready for it to happen, whether your humanity and your ego believes that or not. Um, you may be asked to relinquish everything, everything that you thought was true so that what is actually true for you and your life and your dharmic path can emerge. It takes great humility and great courage. I'm not saying it's easy, but that is the truth of it. You're being asked to let go of all of the fallacies so the truth of who you are and why you're on this planet can emerge. It is a deep divine honor and privilege. It will strip you bare again and again and again of all of the fallacies and so death and rebirth, as with the feminine principle always, is an essential part of this process. The more you can surrender to these cycles and know that you are not losing your mind or um, you are not weird or, you know, you're not evil for going through this process, that you are actually waking up very, very deeply 
and that your soul is prepared for this for many lifetimes, if you can hold that gnosis and that faith in the process in the forefront of your heart and mind, it's going to make it much easier. So thank you very much for being with me, guys. It's been a pleasure, and I look forward to connecting with you again in the next video.